It's already, it's already pressed. I got you, sir. Greetings, everyone. How's everybody doing? It's Sunday. I won't bore you to death, I hope. My name is Akindale. Akindale. It rhymes with a friend of, friend of me. Akindale. I am, it is true that I am a Nigerian American. I didn't change that name when I became conscious, even though I am conscious. My dad is from Nigeria, my mom's here from the city of Detroit. I am the chair, it is very true, the popular belief that I am the chair of the Inkster Economic Development Corporation. And I'm also the chair of the Inkster Downtown Development Authority and president of the Inkster Library Board. That's a lot. It's amazing that I'm still alive after all that time and all this time. Also, as some people already know, no, I'm an academic advisor at Wayne County Community College District, downtown campus. So if you're looking for classes, career choices, you can come see me directly. I promise you, 100%, I'll put you on the right path. Better than the, better than the um, straight and the Golden Brick Road. President, um, soon to be president of the Global, Business, uh, Global African Business Association. That's formerly the National African Business Association. We did that for five years. We, we, are, we are a support group for African-based businesses both abroad and here in the United States. We decided to, we decided to transform ourselves to the Global African Business Association. That will be happening officially tomorrow in our board meeting, and we will be moving things to the next step at the first of the year. Also, the board member for Global for Clean Water. That's why I wanted you to record this because my, my director of this organization is watching, is going to be watching me. That is an organization that's based in Houston, Texas. That's actually one of my global ambassadors in the Global African Business Association. She does work in Cameroon on clean water projects. So that's very, very important when you're looking at Flint. What goes on in Flint also happens on the continent of Africa with clean water, and we are trying to address those issues. <laughs> And last but not least, National Political, uh, Political Director of the Nigerian American Public Affairs Committee. I'm the person that trains folks to run for office and mentor them to run for office and make sure they win. And we had a lot of victories on Tuesday, so that is a very uh, positive sign that we're moving in the right direction. Next slide. So today we're going to talk about Go Global. If, you're on, if you follow me on Facebook, that's all I preach about is go global. And the reason I say go global is because when you look at Detroit, when you look at Flint, when you look at Saginaw, when you look at Benton Harbor, Muskegon Heights, when you look at Highland Park, River Rouge, and Ecorse, I always tell the, the leaders in those municipalities, you have absolutely no business of being broke. And it's, it is inexcusable. They say, Kendale, why do you say that to us? Because if you just decided to do international business, you wouldn't have to worry about being broke. So we're going to talk a little bit about describing import and export activities, comparing balance of trade and balance of payments and list factors that affect the value of, of global currencies, and then we're going to dip, kind of dive into the whole digital marketing piece behind all those things. I just felt like you have to know a little bit about the background of international business <coughs> before you dive into what's really going out there in the world. Yes, ma'am. Import and export. So we have imports, items bought from other countries, exports, goods and services sold to other countries. The city of Detroit, ladies and gentlemen, cities of, the city of Detroit sit on the Detroit River. That is an international waterway. You hear all these wonderful politicians every four years. If you vote for me, I'm going to activate our court authority. You get elected, it never happens. That's because they don't know how to make it happen. They do not under, they do not study the, what imports and exports outside of the automotive industry that we can utilize in the city of Detroit. You understand that? So it's important you're sitting on an international waterway from another country across the way, Windsor, Ontario, Canada, and the city went broke. Totally inexcusable. You have waterway, railway, interstate highway, you have marathon, which is the only oil refinery in the state of Michigan. Africa, I'm gonna use Africa a lot in my examples because that's what I really focus on. Africa, 
like Nigeria, Angola, uh, Cameroon, Ghana, right? So, uh, now they found some oil in other parts of the nation, like Sierra Leone. How come we're not importing our oil here and creating entrepreneurship for our young African Americans to open up their own gas stations? That's what I mean. Exports. What are we exporting out here? What are we digitally exporting out here? And these are things that are important to help people understand the imports and imports and exports. Detroit is very is strategic. The state of Michigan is very strategic when it comes to this type of stuff because we are we have the largest fresh um, body of fresh water in the whole world right here in this state. Yet we are not leveraging our municipalities, our communities, our businesses to grow our wealth. Next slide. Trading on nations. So you have domestic business, that's right here, GM Ford Chrysler. Then you have international business, which refers to business activity needed for creating shipping and selling goods and services across national borders. We know the big three does that. How many African, I challenge somebody on Facebook with this one question. How many African American businesses and companies do we have that's doing international business with West Africa, East Africa, South Africa, or anywhere in the diaspora? Yeah. None. None. That's because we've been, that's because part of it, part of it is most people don't talk about the diaspora as a whole. See, I tell, I tell my own team, the diaspora is a cash cow. Mm -hmm. We should be tapping into our own resources globally to build wealth. The end. Detroit should be on Detroit should be on the par of these other other white communities with a lot of wealth. But we have to think global and bigger and scale our vision up to make that a reality. Next slide. All right, so you hear this on TV, balance of trade, trade surplus, the country export more than the imports, it's favorable trade deficit, the country imports more than the exports is unfavorable. You'll hear people on TV, we're in a trade deficit. What are we going to do and things of that nature? Most of us in our community don't even know what this means. Unfortunately. You hear it on TV, but we don't understand what a trick, we don't, we don't understand what a surplus and a deficit is as it pertains to building our own community. City of Detroit right now is 137 square miles. Most of it, is, we have a lot of land to build, to create trade imports and exports to empower our generations. Next slide. International currencies, you're dealing with a foreign exchange market, you change one currency to another, exchange rate value of currency in one another compared with the value of another, you can move on. International business environment. Now, everybody, if you are doing, I don't care if you're doing traditional business, digital marketing, or anything across national borders, when you are doing international business, you must consider these four factors. Geography, cultural influence, economic development, and here's a big one, political and legal concerns. And I say this is a big one because I'm Nigerian. And I asked one of my global ambassadors about a few months ago, how come it's so hard to do business in Nigeria. And it is the one of the largest, the largest economy on the continent of Africa. She said, Kid away, you have to understand that people really don't do business in dollars. I said, Well, how do we do business in dollars? She said, You have to go to the presidential, you have to go to the president, he has to sign off and, and do something. Now that is a barrier. And that's something to seriously, that's a barrier. It's not impossible to do business in Nigeria, to do it in the Naira, but when you compare the value of the Naira and the dollar, it's like apples and oranges. And that's my country. But there are other countries that are more favorable, like Botswana, you understand. Uh, there are more countries, Kenya, uh, Kenya um, Ghana, and a lot of people are moving towards financial technology, like FinTech, you guys have heard of cryptocurrencies and all that. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are moving towards FinTech on the continent, because to cut down on the corruption, okay? 
So, but you have to keep this, you have to keep, when you're doing international, I don't care what type of international business you're doing, whether it's online or traditional, you gotta keep these four things in, in, in common. You have to do your research on the nation <coughs> that you're trying to do business with. Thanks. Okay, I have a question. So, um, in terms of, because I do some international business as well, and I know for me personally, like you said, it's not just about the paperwork, you got to build those relationships. So what are some key aspects for some of the people in the room that want to do international business? How do they get that access to, per se, talk to the president, to have a seat at the table to say, hey, this is what I want to do with your country. This is how I can bring some beneficial factors. <coughs> what is the best way to do that? Just, do you have to have an ambassador? Do you have to fly all the way over there to make this happen? No. What are some key points do you Quick, the quickest way to do that, the, answer, the quickest way to do that is, is contact the Chamber of Commerce. Chamber of Commerce. Yes, ma'am. So here's an example. Let me give you an example of how that works. So my, my global ambassador is in Nigeria, and she'll be proud of me when she sees this video. Uh, <laughs> she's, uh, she is actually connected to the Abuja Chamber of Commerce and industry through what they call, she, she's the director of the BEST Center. That stands for Business, Entrepreneurship, uh, Science, and Technology. That's kind of like a vocational arm of the Abuja Chamber of Commerce and Industry. And through that, through that Chamber of Commerce, they work with stakeholders in the private sector and the public sector. Fastest way to get things done. So just be connected with the Chamber of That would be the first step, quickly. Not here, but over there. Over there, that's back. correct. That's correct. That's what I do. Ambassadors, if I go to DC and talk to an ambassador, they'll say, okay, I'll get back with you, and you'll never hear from those guys, and just be honest. International trade barriers, government actions can create trade barriers, like Trump. Yep. You see this stuff going on with this trade war that he's trying, he really believes he can win the trade war, but that's another conversation for another day. <laughs> Restrictions to free trade, former trade barriers, uh, like uh, quotas and tariffs. You guys hear the word tariff on TV every night. Uh, informal trade barriers, like culture, traditions, and religion. You can When you, hear this, when you hear this term on television about quotas, that's the government set a limit on quantity of hot products that may be imported or exported within a given period, like crude oil, like agricultural products, things of that nature. Uh, there may sometimes be competition abroad um, that leads to quotas. Next slide. Here's a big one again, tariffs. You hear that about Donald Trump every night on NBC Nightly News, CNN, Fox, whatever you decide to watch. Uh, whatever propaganda you have to watch on TV, tax at, a tax that the government places on certain um, important products. Uh, of course, there's a trade war going on globally, really between the US and China. We wanted to do, Trump wanted to do one with Canada. Canada fought back, so you have this kind of stuff going on. Yes, next. Embargoes, government stopped the export or import of a product completely. That could be oil, that could be gasoline, that could be any type of major product that, a, that a, a government may stop because of terrorism or whatever the case may be. Free trade zones, I'm gonna focus on this just a little bit. This is a selected area where products can be imported duty free and then stored, assembled, and used in manufacturing, usually located around a seaport or airport. That's, this is very important. Um, most people in our community that look like us do not know anything about a free trade zone. So let me just abbreviate it and say it in lay terms for everybody in the room. Let's say, for instance, my cousin or my brother in Nigeria wants to import something to, um, some part, import something to my company here in the U.S. I have, and I have a free trade zone, right? That means in so many words, it's duty free. I don't have to pay anything to the government until it hit the market. A lot of folks don't know anything about free trade zones. I've heard one politician in the past 10 years talk about it. And there are free trade zones all over the state of Michigan. There's, there's one, there's, there, oh, there's one right here at the port of downtown. Now that's the main one. It's called the Greater Detroit Free, free Trade Zone. And then there's sub free trade zones that fall under their umbrella. So there's one, like my mom stays in Taylor. There's one right there on e Road with some type of uh, petroleum company. They're a free trade zone. If you go right outside Metro Airport, there are small companies, there are logistic companies. Those are free trade zones. African Americans have to learn, and Africans, Caribbean people, people of color have to learn about 
free trade zones. Got a buddy of mine right now in Garden City, runs a he runs an import export business. He's never even heard of this. He's been in business 10, 15 years. He's never even heard of this until I discussed it with him one day. So we have to educate ourselves. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so for the free trade zones, I think I want you to import something here. It can stay, it can stay in your facility until it hits the market. So Retail. As long as it comes to That's correct. Okay. But you have to, but you have to apply to become a free trade zone. It's not something you just declare off the grip. Other than that, other, otherwise, everybody. Fair trade agreements. Uh, this is member countries agreeing to remove duties like import taxes uh, and trade barriers and products traded among the like NAFTA, which Trump was trying to change into the U.S. Uh, MCA. Now, this is a big one. This is called the African Growth and Opportunity Act. We call it GOA. It was signed into law in May of 2000 by Bill Clinton. It's the cornerstone of U.S. government trade investment policy towards Sub Saharan Africa, promoting free markets, expanding U.S. African trade investment, stimulating economic growth and facilitating Sub-Saharan Africa's integration into the global economy. I'm going to tell you something very personal about this. For years, I have been talking to lawmakers right here in the state of Michigan about tailoring this federal program at the state level so everybody in the room can play ball. I'm not going to even tell you what the responses are. This year is it's not a free trade agreement like NAFTA, but it's an agreement, let's say for instance, the U.S. want to do business with Ghana on, on different products. They have an agreement to do imports and exports, okay? And the president has, the, has um, unlike other free trade agreements, the president of the United States determines what country played ball for that year, okay? What we push in our organization is we want to make this a free trade agreement. Now, I, didn't, I never said the road to become a free trade agreement with this is easy, but we want to do a free trade agreement and we want to tailor this at the state level because Michigan, most people don't know this, Michigan does business what, Brazil, Canada, Mexico, Saudi Arabia, Germany, France, South Korea, Singapore, and they don't do business nowhere in Africa. Now, you go to Africa, there's a Domino's Pizza and a KFC. You don't see African-based businesses from the continent here in Detroit building economic development and creating entrepreneurship for young people. You don't see that. That's why we advocate for that. You can move. The goal offers tangible incentives for African countries to continue their efforts to open their economies and build free markets. It is a free uh, promotion act to expand the volume of sub-Saharan export and hence global export. Now this is a big one also. This is where a lot of us get lost in the cracks. We have African Americans sometimes do not know how to connect this, their business with the continent. We have Africans on the continent, they do not know how to do business in the United States. That part of that is because they do not understand the visa game 100%. If you can master this, you can retire early. Guaranteed. So from Africa to the US, know the visa game. For example, you have an E1 visa. Now, E1 visa is a treaty trader visa. It's allowed nationals from certain countries to live and work in the United States and engage in international trade between the U.S. and their home country. That means you don't have to find somebody to get married for a green card. That means you do not have to stay past your F-1 visa and going to school. If you, are a if you have a treaty agreement with the United States, you have people that look like us that can come here right to the city of Detroit, open up space like this, do business with us, and they can stay here for a certain amount of time. 